God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Easter triumph, Easter joy, sin alone can this destroy. From sin's power, Lord, set us free, newborn souls in you to be. Father, who the crown shall give, Saviour, by whose death we live, Spirit, guide through all our days, three in one your name we praise. Look on us, Lord, and see how we are despised. Alleluia. And yet you have rejected and spurned, and are angry with the one you have anointed. You have broken your covenant with your servant, and dishonored his crown in the dust. You have broken down all his walls, and reduced his fortresses to ruins. He is despoiled by all who pass by. He has become the taunt of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have made all his enemies rejoice. You have made his sword give way. You have not upheld him in battle. You have brought his glory to an end. You have hurled his throne to the ground. You have cut short the years of his youth. You have heaped disgrace upon him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Look on us, Lord and see how we are despised. Alleluia. I am the root and stock of David. I am the morning star. Alleluia. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like a fire? Remember, Lord, the shortness of my life and how frail you have made the sons of men. What man can live and never see death? Who can save himself from the grasp of the grave? Where are your mercies of the past, O Lord, which you have sworn in your faithfulness to David? Remember, Lord, how your servant is taunted, how I have to bear all the insults of the peoples, Thus your enemies taunt me, O Lord, mocking your anointed at every step. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the root and stock of David. I I am the the morning morning star. star. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our years wither away like grass, but you, Lord God, are eternal. Alleluia. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Before the mountains were born, or the earth or the world brought forth, you are God without beginning or end. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up and flowers, by evening it withers and fades. So we are destroyed in your anger, struck with terror in your fury. Our guilt lies open before you, our secrets in the light of your face. All our days pass away in your anger. Our life is over like a sigh. Our span is seventy years, or eighty for those who are strong. And most of these are emptiness and pain. 
They pass swiftly and we are gone. Who understands the power of your anger and fears the strength of your fury? Make us know the shortness of our life that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity to your servants. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Give us joy to balance our affliction for the years when we knew misfortune. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. Give success to the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our years wither away like grass, but, but you, you, Lord God, God are, are eternal. eternal. Alleluia. God has raised the Lord to life. Alleluia. Through his power he will also raise us up. Alleluia. From the first letter of the Apostle John, I have written this to you to make you realize that you possess eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. We have this confidence in God, that he hears us whenever we ask for anything according to his will. And since we know that he hears us whenever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. Anyone who sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, should petition God, and thus life will be given to the sinner. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin. I do not say that one should pray about that. True, all wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin is deadly. We know that no one begotten of God commits sin. Rather, God protects the one begotten by him and so the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God while the whole world is under the evil one. We know too that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to recognize the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, for we are in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. My little children, be on your guard against idols. We know that the Son of God has come and given us understanding that we might know the true God. Alleluia. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, nearest the Father's heart, has made him known and given us understanding that we might know the true God. Alleluia. From a commentary on the Gospel of John by St. Cyril of Alexandria, Bishop. After Christ had completed his mission on earth, it still remained necessary for us to become sharers in the divine nature of the Word. We had to give up our own life and be so transformed that we would begin to live an entirely new kind of life that would be pleasing to God. This was something we could do only by sharing in the Holy Spirit. It was most fitting that the sending of the Spirit and his descent upon us should take place after the departure of Christ our Savior. As long as Christ was with them in the flesh, it must have seemed to believers that they possessed every blessing in him. But when the time came for him to ascend to his heavenly Father, it was necessary for him to be united through his Spirit to those who worshipped him, and to dwell in our hearts through faith. Only by his own presence within us in this way could he give us confidence to cry out, Abba, Father, 
make it easy for us to grow in holiness and through our possession of the all-powerful Spirit, fortify us invincibly against the wiles of the devil and the assaults of men. It can easily be shown from examples both in the Old Testament and the New that the Spirit changes those in whom he comes to dwell. He so transforms them that they begin to live a completely new kind of life. Saul was told by the prophet Samuel, The Spirit of the Lord will take possession of you, and you shall be changed into another man. St. Paul writes, as we behold the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces, that glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit transforms us all into his own likeness from one degree of glory to another. Does this not show that the Spirit changes those in whom he comes to dwell and alters the whole pattern of their lives? With the Spirit within them, it is quite natural for people who had been absorbed by the things of this world to become entirely otherworldly in outlook, and for cowards to become men of great courage. There can be no doubt that this is what happened to the disciples. The strength they received from the Spirit enabled them to hold firmly to the love of Christ, facing the violence of their persecutors unafraid. Very true, then, was our Savior saying that it was to their advantage for him to return to heaven. His return was the time appointed for the descent of the Holy Spirit. If I do not go, the Advocate will never come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will teach you all truth. Alleluia. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you all that he hears from me and will proclaim to you the things to come. When he comes, he will teach you all truth. Alleluia. Let us pray. Father, let your Spirit come upon us with power to fill us with his gifts. May he make our hearts pleasing to you and ready to do your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.